Oh, yay, I'm almost done solving my FTO. Great, I just need to insert this triplet and I'm on the last step. Wow, so cool. Oh wait, this step. It's called L3C and I absolutely hate it because it stands for last three triplets, which involves having to pair this, 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 all at one time. Man, I can never understand how to do this. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna sledge this to insert that uh, triangle. Okay, pair that up. Then I sledge it, then I... Um, Wait, why do I do that? Um, Wait, why do I do that? Uh, again? Again? There's nothing but yellow. Um, is that good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> this is almost a but not a yellow. What did I do wrong? Oh no, I give up on FTO. Hashtag FTO not for WCA. What's cooking good looking? If the guy in the previous clip is somewhat relatable to you, I think that this tutorial will be a much easier and better way of doing L3T, which is also suited for beginners. Just slightly more advanced, but it provides a lot more benefits and flexibility. This method is called two-look TCP or two-look triangle plus corner permutation. However, like most things in life, this method will involve more than two looks. So, in the beginner's method, um, if you've seen Ben Puzzle's tutorial, you would know that what you need to do is to pair up as many of these uh, non-yellow triangle and corner blocks as possible. Then you would either um, take them out, then try and pair them again. And once you're done pairing all three of your triplets, you would end up trying to sledge or hedge it into a slot, and you would end up with just a corner permutation algorithm left. However, this method of solving L3T is incredibly unreliable and causes a lot of pain and frustration, well, in my experience at least, and this is especially bad in cases like these, where you've paired up one triplet, and you've paired up your second triplet, and you are almost done with your third one, but you see, one corner is twisted 180 degrees away from it being solved. This is known as a one-flip case, and if you use the beginner's method of doing it, it takes a really long time to solve as well. And this method is also one of the ways that you can actually overcome this. So the first step of this method is pretty similar to the beginner's method, but with a slight twist. In the beginner's method, what you would aim to do is try and pair up triangles and corners of the same color, and then you would take them out and do the same for another corner and triangle block. However, in this method, you don't exactly have to pair up the same color of triangle and corner. You see, uh, what we aim to do are either blocks like these, where they're both the same color, or you can also form pseudo triplets like this. So when it's purple and red, while it might not be the same color, we're still counting this as one big block for the triplet, and you'll see how this helps later. However, something that you should note is that Doing something like this with a yellow and a yellow, this is not a triplet, not in the beginner method, and not in this method too. And something else you should know is that when you're forming a triplet like, uh, let's say this, this might seem like it's a pseudo triplet where you have blue and yellow, but when yellow is your top layer, you don't want to have any of your pseudo triplets having a yellow color inside as well. So this would not count as a pseudo triplet, so just take note of that. So before we move on to the next step, we should probably know some pointers about pairing triplets or pseudo triplets. So you should probably get used to how a hedge or a sledge algorithm works on the FTO. In this case, doing a sledge actually flips this top right triplet and this front triplet, just like this. And at the same time, if you have a triplet or a pair over here, it would also preserve this. So this is very useful for us in pairing up our triplets or pseudo triplets. So let's say that you're pairing up your triplets and you've already got one on the top layer that's paired, which is great. And now you've done the second one by doing a U prime move. And what you want to do now is keep this triplet on the top layer and flip this triplet such that it goes on the top layer alongside this one. And we can utilize the sledge algorithm from earlier to do this. Now, something that you might want to do is see that, hey, these two triplets are here, and you just randomly sledge. But this is not what you want, because yes, while it does take out the front triplet just now into the top layer, it actually moves the one from up here into this secondary layer, which is not what you want. So something to take note of is that every triplet that goes onto the top left corner always gets preserved, and these two get flipped. So if you want to preserve a triplet, keep it on the top left corner, and just do a hedge or a sledge. And now we've got both our triplets on the top layer. Now if you have a bar in the back, what you want to do is rotate the FTO in such a way where you're not facing this corner. So I'm rotating this way because the corner is over here, and if I rotate it this way, this corner will be directly in front of me, which is not what I want. So I want it like this. And what you do first is move this face in such a way that this corner does not touch the white layer. So I know I have to move it like that, and then what I want to do is continue it on as either a hedge or a sledge. So you already know how a hedge or a sledge works. So I know that this is the first move of my hedge or sledge. So this will be my next move. 
undo undo and this ends up solving the top layer with the exception of this this center and this center over here which is what we'll do in the next step now this is the exact same thing where the bar is in the right but i'll just do this example one more time so let's say it's in the right you want to rotate such that this corner is not directly in front of you you're going to move this layer whoops such that it remains in the top layer with this corner you want to move the other layer and finish it off like a sludge or a hedge and as such you should solve the entire top layer now in the final scenario where you don't have a bar on either the left or right side and it's just this block of three pieces in the back, you want to do a two flip, which is actually pretty simple. Don't worry, it's just a conjunction of a hedge and a sludge. So you want to do a hedge from the back here, and then rotate downwards and sludge. And that will solve your entire top layer. If you've done the first two steps correctly, you should end up with a soft layer and just these few centers that have not been permuted yet. If you get lucky and if you just skip this step, well, you're done solving the FTO. But other than that, there's three different cases. One of them is this two swap over here. The second one is when you get a U perm between these three centers. And the other one is the U perm in the other direction. And all it takes is actually just one algorithm to solve all three of these cases. And this one algorithm is very similar to one on the three by three. So, uh, for comical effects, I'm using an extra large 3x3, but if you know this OLL, well, you know how to solve that case already. And just in case you don't know, it involves doing a wide move, taking that out, doing an M move, then inserting this pair. The exact same principle works on the FTO, which I'll be showing you for this first case here. Well, what you want to do now is, you know how you have the yellow layer solved? Well, put that on the left and put one of the centers when you have a case where two centers need a swap, you put one of them in front of you right now, and the other one has to go behind. And pretending like this is your R wide, and this is your U layer, you do the same thing. So it's R wide, U, R prime, U prime, I'm doing M, U, R, U prime, R prime. And that solves your FTO. The second case is when you have this U perm, where these pieces go in a clockwise direction. For this one, you hold it the exact same way at any angle you want since there are all three centers, and you pretty much do the exact same thing as the two swap that I showed you early on, except that before doing that, you want to do a D and an R. So those are going to be a setup moves, then you just do the algorithm as per normal, and you just undo the setup moves and you're done solving the FTO. Now, there's just one last case to solving the FTO. Now, this one is just like the UPM before, but instead of the pieces going in a clockwise direction, they're going anti-clockwise. So same principle, you hold it to the left, and you do a D and an R for your setup moves. But instead of going through the algorithm like I showed you just now, uh, you do something slightly different. You do the inverse of that algorithm, which, if you know 3x3, three three, is just this OLL over here. So it involves taking out this pair, doing an M, prime, and you just insert that. Same principle applies to the FTO. Uh, once again, you want to hold the center to your left, then do a D and an R move, and you take out the pair, do an M slice, insert everything, and you just undo your R and your D moves, and you're done solving the FTO. If you have any questions as to how to look TCP works, or about FTO in general, do feel free to ask them down in the comments. Now just do note that I might not be able to answer every single one because I'm not very good at FTO, I just learned how to solve this yesterday. And I only made this tutorial because after watching the Kit Clement and the Ben Puzzles tutorials, I found that yes, they were very good, but I was left a little bit confused. So I hope this slightly more detailed tutorial could clarify some doubts that you have. Thanks for watching.